Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian, and today's video will be answering the question, what is a cumulative frequency distribution? This is a viewer-requested video. I always appreciate viewer requests, so be sure to leave your lesson requests down in the comments. Let's get into the lesson. So in today's video, we'll be going over two examples of how to find the cumulative frequency distribution of a set of data. The first example is a discrete case, and the second example will be a continuous case. I'm not going to spend too much time in this lesson talking about the difference between discrete and continuous. If you're unfamiliar with those terms, I'll explain them a little in the description. So you can look there, or if you'd like to hear me explain the terms a bit more, you're free to request a lesson on it. And of course, there's lots of sources already online explaining the two terms. So with that said, let's get into the example. So here we have a made up study for us to work through. So I'll read through this and underline the important information. A study is conducted at a supermarket. The study gathered data on how many frozen pizzas customers buy when they visit the store. 219 customers bought zero frozen pizzas. 160 customers bought one frozen pizza. 53 customers bought two frozen pizzas. 17 customers bought three frozen pizzas. 8 customers bought 4 frozen pizzas, and 1 customer bought 5 frozen pizzas. That was me back when I was living in college, subsisting entirely off of frozen pizzas. They sure were good. But lastly, of course, it asks us, find the cumulative frequency distribution of the data. And all we really need to do to describe the cumulative frequency distribution is to fill in this handy-dandy table I've already set up for us. So before filling in the table, let's just take a look at each column. So the first column is the pizzas column. In this column goes the number of pizzas that customers are buying. Then we have the frequency column, which is the number of people who are buying these different amounts of pizzas. The third column, of course, is the cumulative frequency column, and we'll get to that after we fill in the first two columns. So for starters, the pizzas column. So looking back up to the example, we see that zero frozen pizzas were purchased by some customers, one frozen pizza was purchased by some customers, two frozen pizzas were purchased by some customers, and so on for three, four, and five. So in our table, we need a spot for all of these numbers. So we'll put zero here in the first row. So that's zero frozen pizzas, and then of course, one, two, three, four, and five frozen pizzas. So we're able to represent all of our data. Now we'll fill in the frequency column. And in each row of the frequency column, we'll go the number of people who bought the corresponding number of frozen pizzas. So again, looking back up to the example, we see that 219 customers bought zero frozen pizzas. So we'll put a 219 here in the frequency column in the first row because 219 people bought zero pizzas. And then going on to the next, we see that 160 customers bought one frozen pizza. So down in the table, we put 160. And then 53 customers bought two frozen pizzas. So in the frequency column, in the row with the two, we'll put 50. Three. Let me rewrite that because that was a bad five. There we go, 53. And then let's see how many people bought three pizzas. Looking up at the example box, we see 17 customers bought three frozen pizzas. So we'll put a 17 there. And then eight customers bought four frozen pizzas. We'll put an eight there. And of course, just one bought five. So we can put a one in that row. So now we've got our table mostly filled out. We've got numbers of pizza and we've got the number of customers who bought these numbers of pizza. So all we have left is the cumulative frequency column. So what the cumulative frequency tells us in each row is the number of people who bought that corresponding number of pizzas or less. So in this first row here, what we need to put is the number of people who purchased zero pizzas or less. Now, of course, you can't purchase fewer than zero pizzas, and we know that 219 people purchased exactly zero pizzas, so 219 people purchased zero pizzas or less. Or to be perfectly correct with my English, I think I should say 219 people purchased zero pizzas or fewer. So then moving on to the next row, in this box should be the number of people who purchased one or fewer pizzas. 
We know that 160 people purchased exactly one pizza, and some people also purchased zero pizzas, which is fewer than one, so we need to include those people too, and there were 219 of those people. So all we have to do is add 160 to 219, and then in this cell, we'll put 379, because this is the number of people who purchased one pizza or fewer. It is an accumulation of these people thrown in with these people, because they all purchased one or fewer pizzas. So moving on to the next row, in this cell, we need to put the number of people who purchased two pizzas or fewer. And perhaps you'll see the pattern now. Of course, 53 people purchased exactly two pizzas. One and zero are both less than two, so we also need to include all of these people. Again, the frequency of people accumulates all the way from zero up to the number we're currently looking at. So the number we need to put in this cell is this number plus this number plus this number, which is the same as adding this number, 53, to this number here. And doing that, we get 432. 379 plus 53 is 432. And then again, we move to the next row, and down here should go the number of people who purchased three pizzas or fewer. So all we need to do is add all of these numbers together, which is the same as adding 17 to this number here. So we do that and get 449. Then for this cell, we just have to add 8 to this number, and that gives us 400. 57. And then lastly, we add 1 to that number to get 458. So each number in these rows is telling us the number of people who purchased the number of pizzas listed in that row or fewer. So if we look at 449, this means that 449 people purchased three pizzas or fewer, which is why we added all of these numbers up. And then before we leave this example, I'll also say, suppose we wanted to make a cumulative frequency function, say we called it cf of x, then if we inputted, let's say 4, into that function, so cf of 4, that would output 457, as we see here, because 457 people purchased 4 or fewer pizzas, and that's what the cumulative frequency tells us. And this table here describes our cumulative frequency distribution. So now let's move on to the continuous case. And again, we have a made up example for us to work through. So I'll read through it and underline the important information. So a study is conducted at a fast food restaurant. The study gathered data on how much time it takes for each customer to go through the drive-thru. Five people spent between zero and two minutes in the drive-thru. 20 people spent between 2 and 4 minutes in the drive-thru, 53 people spent between 4 and 6 minutes in the drive-thru, 28 people spent between 6 and 8 minutes in the drive-thru, 16 people spent between 8 and 10 minutes in the drive-thru. And again, we are tasked with finding the cumulative frequency distribution of the data, which we can do by filling in this table. So, in this first column, we have the time, and in each one of these cells in the time column is going to go an interval of time that is involved in the data set described in the example. And the reason we're using intervals is because time is a continuous measurement. So we can't list every possible time value in our table because there's an infinite amount of possible time values because it's continuous. So that's why we're using the intervals. So let's start by filling in the time column. And looking back up to the example, we see we have intervals of 0 and 2. We have an interval of between 2 and 4, between 4 and 6, between 6 and 8, and then between 8 and 10. So let's put those intervals here in the time column, and we will just describe them like this. 0 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8, and 8 to 10. And I should say, it's assumed in the example that nobody is taking exactly 2 minutes, or exactly 4 minutes, 
or exactly six minutes to go through the drive-through. So those boundary values are not being included in the data, and that's just for the sake of making a more convenient example. We could still easily work with the data if those boundary values were included, but for the sake of this example, they are not. So now let's fill in the frequency column, which is the number of people who took these different times to go through the drive through We see that five people, looking up in the example, spent between zero and two minutes. So we'll put a five in there. And then let's see, 20 people spent between two and four minutes. So in the two to four row in the frequency column, we'll put 20. 53 people spent between four and six minutes in the drive through so we'll put a 53 there. 28 people spent between six and eight minutes in the drive through so we'll put a 28 there. And then lastly, 16 sorry folks spent between eight and 10 minutes in the drive through so we'll put a 16 down there. So again, the cumulative frequency is just the number of people who took some amount of time or less. So if we look in here at the cumulative frequency of this time interval, it's the number of people who took between zero and two minutes or less to go through the drive through which is the same as saying it's the number of people who took two minutes or less to go through the drive through And just like the previous example, that's just going to be this number here because you can't take less than zero minutes to go through the drive through So it's just that number there. Then looking in the second box, we'll put the number of people who took four minutes or less to go through the drive through All of these people took less than four minutes to go through the drive through because they were between two and four. And all of these people took less than four minutes to go through the drive through because they were between zero and two. So we just add these two numbers up just as before and we get 25. And going through the rest of these, it's the same idea. Number of people who took six minutes or less, well, that's just all of these people, plus all of these people, plus all of these people. 53 plus 20 is 73, plus five is 78, so we'll put a 78 there. And of course, that's the same as adding 53 to 25. Then for this row here, the number of people who took eight minutes or less, that's just all of these people, plus all of these people. So we'll add 28 to 78, giving us 106 in this row. Then adding 106 to 16, we finally get our final value of 122 people who took 10 minutes or less, which is just everybody who is in our data set. Everybody took less than 10 minutes. And again, this number here is equal to the sample size of the study, which was 122 people. So I hope that makes it pretty clear what cumulative frequency is all about. And this table here, describes our cumulative frequency distribution in this case. Each number, like 78 for example, is the number of people who took this amount of time or less, which is all of the people up here as well. Each number, like 78 for example, is the amount of people who took this amount of time or less, which includes all of these values above it as well. And just as a quick note, when you're thinking of the cumulative frequency in a table like this, and you're thinking, well, all you have to do is take this value and add it to all of the values above, it's important that your rows are sorted properly. So if, for example, we took this row, two to four, and we put it down here, then that would make things a little more confusing. Because then, if we went to find the cumulative frequency in this row, we wouldn't be adding all of the values above it because if this row was down here, that would just be every value. We'd still only be adding up the amount of people who took less than four minutes, which is only these people and these people. So don't think of it as adding up all of the previous rows. Just think of it as adding up everybody who had this value or less. And if you set up your table right, that will be adding up all of the previous rows. Just like in the pizza example, the cumulative frequency is the amount of people who bought this number of pizzas or fewer. Which, since we sorted our table well, is this number plus all of the numbers above it in the table. But with all that said, perhaps you're jonesing for a visual representation of these cumulative frequency distributions. And you're in luck, because I prepared a couple histograms for both of these examples. 
but I'm not going to walk you through making them because I don't want to drag this lesson on too much, and this lesson isn't about making histograms, it's just about the cumulative frequency distribution, which like I said, we've described here in this table. So I'd recommend giving it a shot yourself. Try making a histogram for this example, the continuous case, and for this example, the discrete case. And now I'll show you the histograms that I made, and I'm not going to talk too much about them because, again, this video isn't about writing histograms, but here we've got the cumulative frequency distribution of frozen pizzas purchased, and you can see each bar gets bigger and bigger because each bar is simply adding a number to the previous bar. So if we look at one of these values, like 219, for example, and then go back to our pizza example, we can see that's the first number here in the cumulative frequency column. Then we added 160 to 219, giving us 379. And back in the histogram, you see 379 is the value of the second bar. We took 219 and we added the 160 people to it. And then here is the histogram for the cumulative frequency distribution of the time spent in a drive through and you can see the x-axis here is labeled a little bit differently than in the previous example because this was a discrete example and this was a continuous example. And again, I can talk more about that or more about making histograms in another video. And just let me know if any of you would like to see that. But I'll leave these histograms for you to look at and that is what the cumulative frequency distribution is. So I hope this video helped you understand cumulative frequency. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can't wait.